Hello everyone, and welcome to Etalan, and also welcome to my new workshop, or workshop to be, I should say. I've just moved into a new apartment, with this room being dedicated to my workshop for creating videos and dolls. So let's get started. First step in making this room is protecting the floor. Doll creation can get very messy, and I'm horrendously clumsy. I have to make sure to keep this space safe from my inevitable paint messes. I laid down office carpet tiles on the floor as a temporary solution to this. Also, um, please do excuse my horrendous lighting and camera work in this section. Silly me was like, yes, I would love to film the creation of this workroom, but then packed up all my camera and lighting equipment. Um, so please do excuse that for the time being. So far, this is what I have done. I have my computer desk against the wall, workbench in the middle of the room, with my supply boxes behind, that will hold my supplies like spray paints, power tools, craft materials and such. Having birds means everything needs to have its place to be put away, otherwise they will be stolen or broken. <laughs> my partner and I were able to get the deltos here without a hitch, which is great those other glass display cabinets from Ikea. It'll be nice to have my display pieces alongside each side of the bookcase, hopefully to give off that eclectic look. The planned use for this space is of course my office and my workshop, but aesthetically I want this place to have an apothecary theme. An apothecary being a shop where a medicinal professional would formulate and distribute medicine similar to a high street chemist nowadays. While these shops are generally associated with the era of Victorian Britain and North America, traditional Chinese herbless medicine shops really laid the groundwork for shops like these to exist. While originally I wanted to make this room into you know, a makeshift Victorian chemist with wood furniture and endless drawers and jars, I feel that's far too ambitious as this is a one year lease and I am not rich by any means. <laughs> For now, I want to have the elements of an apothecary and light academia, whilst making the space as light and inviting as I can. Well, as inviting as a cabinet of curiosities can be. <laughs> As the carpet tiles are quite dark, I want to bring more light into this room. With this, I'll be going with primarily white furniture. Something that immediately comes to mind when you think of a Victorian chemist, apothecary or Chinese herbalist is the numerous drawers of different remedies. To give off this aesthetic, I'm going to be doing up these IKEA wood storage boxes. To match the rest of the room, I'll be painting them white and adding some vintage looking brass handles I got off AliExpress. I was going to make little notes to add them to the slots at the front of the handles, but realised that my handwriting is quite shocking, so do excuse the bareness of that. And here's just a quick before and after of the drawers. Even though there wasn't much work to change it, I think it still looks quite in keeping with the style that I was trying to go for, which is very exciting. As well as the drawers, something quite a staple of an old doctor's shop is the various jars of bits. To add to that look, I grabbed some jars I've collected over time with crafting material and collecting items. For instance, this is a jar of Fergus's first feather malt, 
and another jar of Fergus and Apollo's 2021-2022 to mould. And can't forget Manaki Neko for some luck. As well as the drawers um, and the bookshelf which I painted, I want to paint up this cork board that I have. While I do look like I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing here and just plopping paint on haphazardly, I do promise I'm trying to go for that rustic um, Parisian painted effect. Later on, I'm going to be adding some pictures, prints and such that I've collected over time for an, I wouldn't say inspiration board, but a pretty things board. So I flipped this bookshelf right, thinking I had loads of books to store, only to find and realise in my whole life I've only collected 17 books, nine of them being manga and picture books, and none on the shelf that I have completely finished. I'm very much an audiobook kind of person. I guess um, this is what it looks like when your aesthetic ambition in life collides with your inability to read. <laughs> Nonetheless, I now have a place to store my very small library. Being a doll customizer, or a doll designer, and being a hoarder of toys and figurines, I feel are just two sides of the same coin. So of course, I have an absolutely ridiculous collection of such. Time to unpack and assemble them all again. Unfortunately, this figure got damaged in transit. That's okay though, um, I'll be able to fix it a little later on when I unpack all my craft supplies. Unpacking all of my figurines took a ridiculously long time. I was very worried I was going to be finding more damaged figurines, but thankfully, I didn't. I'm not really sure where I'm going to be able to display my whole collection. Previously, I was able to have them on the walls, um, on shelves and such, but as this place doesn't have any shelves, I only have like deltoffs, I will have to figure out where to put them. I'm sure I will figure out a way to show them all off in their whole glory. For the displays in the Deltops, I decided to go with a colour themed display. The displays will probably change within a week or two, um, but for now this is what I have decided to go with. After the figurines, it's time to unbox my doll collection. First is my newest edition, which is the 2012 Christmas Pulip, which I got last week or two weeks ago, and I am absolutely just in love. As well as this Pulip, I got two others which are secondhand that I was thinking of customising. Of course, do let me know in the comments below if you would like to see that. 
Next is my Shadow High Dolls, Chanel Onyx and Natasha Zima, which landed in Australia recently and oh my gosh, they are beautiful. I love them. I'm so happy. <laughs> Of the same brand, there's also the Rainbow High Dolls that I have. An original and cheer Poppy Rowan and Ruby Anderson. Next is my two 20th anniversary brats, Jade and Sasha. And lastly, my Kern Dolls um, from China, which I am very obsessed with at the moment. I was able to get blank heads of these dolls as well from their factory I think it was and I've been itching to customize them and now on to my own dolls Fuck. <laughs> for the display at the moment I'm going to be going with the completed set of my monster high revamps I won't be showing them on camera though because um, spoilers a little bit I have made changes um, which I think I'll be showing in a video in the future um, so I'm not going to be showing them. Sorry, you can't see them. I'll only be unboxing the ones I'll be putting in my Delftoffs for now. Um, the rest are still bubble wrapped and packed away very carefully. I don't particularly like displaying all my customs at the same time because it just ends up looking cluttered and you don't really get to appreciate each doll as they are, in my opinion. <laughs> um, I generally just go with my most recent creations or ones I'm particularly proud of and rotate from there. And moving on to the doll customs to be, my stock box, which is definitely overflowing at this point. I tend to only buy doll bulk lots, um, I never really buy them just on their own. While I only do it once every six months or so, it still pads out the collection quite a lot. Editing this video, I'm just thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I have so much stuff. And yes, I do. I absolutely do. Um, I definitely need to start cracking on into actually customizing this collection. It'll be fun to learn to work in this new space and work on new designs. And of course, have you along for the journey. Time to set up my desk. To start off, I grabbed the new game mat that I bought recently that I use as a mouse pad. This mat is from Gamer Mats and is of a Bora warrior who rides a corgi fighting off raccoons. Very cute. My painting rack is getting very empty. I think I need to go shopping for supplies soon. I had to buy this drawer unit to hide away all the objects that are most stolen from my birds. Naughty little goblins just want to steal everything. <laughs> it's winter in the southern hemisphere, which means we have our heaters on almost all the time, but that means we don't have much moisture in the air, so putting on a humidifier is a must. Thankfully, I have my Miffy humidifier. For desk figures, I think I'm going to go with my bunnies, of Sonico and Miku. And Usagi, which ironically means bunny in Japanese, so accidentally on theme. As in my old place, I liked having art on my walls. I went to Supernova recently, which is a big um, kind of like Comic-Con convention here in Sydney. 
I was able to pick up some prints from Artist Alley at the convention. I had to pick up these prints from Cherry Rabbit. I went past their stall like three times just to look at their beautiful work. These paper dolls from the artist Moss Dolls. Aren't they just darling and perfectly quirky? With the cuttings from magazines, calendars, and just a general eclectic pile of stuff, I'm going to be pinning them onto the board that I painted earlier. Apollo was very interested in this process, even trying to bury himself in the papers at one point. Finally, I was able to go pick up my plants. After leaving them for a couple of weeks unattended, they definitely need some TLC. I love adding little trinkets to my plants. This Heartleith Pothos has a smisky in it. It reminds me very much of the tree spirits in Princess Mononoke. At the heart of this ivy arch is a rock I collected from the top of Mount Stone. This ivy is a little worse for wear. With a little trimming away of the dead and some rearranging, as well as some well needed water and fertilizer, it should bounce back again in no time. Oh, and I can't forget this plant's trinket an owl carved from bone. In the move, I found the only ball jointed doll that I actually own. I bought him in 2019. He's never been customized and I don't really have plans to do so. I have an inkling he might be a recast, so it very much disincentivized me to want to customize him. Nonetheless, I'll display him as he is for now, encouraging this plant that he sits next to to drape around him and eventually start to grow like graves and statues that are forgotten, reclaimed by nature. And with that, I think we're done. I think it's time for a tour.